Okay, so here we are in part two, and we've set up our sparks just the way we want them. So uh, let's do a little bit more. First of all, this bar is way too red. It should be much, much oranger. So I'm going to bring down that a little bit, and then make the yellows stand out a little bit more. And the particles themselves, I gotta change the color of those too. So uh, let's see what we have to do. First we have to change the color of our particles. We have to change both these colors to more of a dark orange. Really fits it better. Um, right about there. And then also we can apply a fast blur effect to that, and a blur of about 10 should work fine, just so it has a glow to it. And also the bar, we can go to Effect, Stylize, Glow, and increase the glow radius of that, and then hit Control, or select the layer, Control D, duplicate it, set the second one's blend mode to screen, and we can delete the glow from that one. And actually we can adjust and play with the settings for the glow. Uh, we can change the original colors to A and B colors. Actually, no. we'll leave that alone. What we need to do is correct some of these things. Uh, hit U to bring up the keyframes. Now we can apply text. So we'll just do layer new text and we'll type loading uh, loading sound effects Okay, and we'll have them change right when this thing hits it goes flying. So uh, under the text options, we can come down to text, source text, and set a stop keyframe for that, or freeze keyframe. I'm not sure the exact name. And then hit page down to move one frame forward. And then double click on the text layer, and we can change this to something else. Gloating. Um, no. Uh, asteroid. Let me spell that right. That's probably not even spelled right. Asteroid fields. So, it changes on the fly there. And surprisingly, the asteroid field loads much faster than the sound effects. So, um, anyway, that's for the text. Last thing we can do is create a new black solid. Not a light. We'll create a new solid, make it black, and then go to effect, generate lens flare. We want to set the lens type to 105 millimeter prime, uh, lower the intensity to about 60, and then take the first red solid, hit U to reveal our expressions and stuff, and then go back to that black solid, alt click on the stopwatch for the flare center, and then pick whip that down to the position of our particles. So now that will stay with them as well. Uh, next, we can go about coloring this. Uh, set the blend mode first to screen or add. I'll do add. And then we can go to effect, color correction, tint, and that will make it black and white. And then back to curves once again. Go to the red, bring it up, go to the blues, bring it down. Uh, let's see how that looks. Uh, that looks pretty good. And you can fool around with the colors all you want. You can fool around with the blend modes. You could probably get much better results than what I have here. But uh, that is basically it. And then also back here before the actual 
text or before the bar shows up we can have the lens flare kind of flare on so we'll hit UU to reveal all our changed amounts and under the flare brightness we'll set a keyframe for that put that to zero we want to be able to see the other one here and then move down to when the loading bar starts to appear um, right about here should work fine and then we can set the brightness to about 80 and then move down a few frames more and set it to 60 now you could tighten these keyframes up if you want that should work fine for now let's look at that and see what that is doing for us so far <clears throat> So, loading sound effects. Uh, before we do anything else, we'll just turn off the glow because that can take forever. <clears throat> we'll just go down to the very bare essentials for this. And let's take a look at that. As you can see, there's our flare, and then it dies down a little bit. <clears throat> and the loading bar should be somewhere. There it is. Why it's way over there, I'm not sure. But anyway, you can see the big flare, which is what we want. And uh, that's basically it. So it comes down here. When it reaches that second keyframe, it changes. I'm sure that's spelled wrong. But anyway, and then at the end, they're going to fly off, and then they'll stop. And if you want them to keep spawning and just have a few little flickering here and there, then what you can do is go into the settings, um, go to the position and alt-click that and just add the wiggle expression to wiggle, you know, like two times a second, and then only wiggle about maybe five pixels. So it'll jump around a little bit, but it won't be noticeably, like, flying all over the screen. So, um, that is basically it. We could put a background in here, and I have a texture I made in Photoshop, and that looks kind of cool. But uh, that's it for this brief tutorial. Okay, so the second part, I will be showing you how to take this, and instead of having sparks and orange, I'm going to be putting this in an underwater scene, and with uh, some bubbles, and a more suitable underwater font, probably. So, uh, until next time, I'm David Wood, David Wood FX, and I'll see you next time. Oh, well, one more thing. Before I forget, go to Video Copilot and watch the 3D Sparks tutorial. That is creating uh, sparks using 32-bit color, so it's a much better job than what I have. And uh, I'm sure you've probably all seen this site. So, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, see you next time.